Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. While advanced users may want to simply create a new mail merge document, new users may find that it's easier to create a mail merge document by using the mail merge wizard provided in Word. This leads you through the process of creating a mail merge document step by step. To start a mail merge in Word, first click the Mailings tab within the ribbon. Then click the Start Mail Merge button in the Start Mail Merge group. From the Buttons drop-down menu, choose the Step-by-Step -step Mail Merge Wizard command. This will open the Mail Merge Task pane at the right side of the document window. Here you answer the questions posed to you and click the Next button at the bottom of the pane to continue through the Mail Merge process until you are finished. The first screen of the Mail Merge Wizard will ask you, what type of document are you working on? You will select the Option button that corresponds to the type of Mail Merge document that you're trying to create. The choices that follow in the next few steps of the Mail Merge Wizard will vary slightly depending upon which choice you make in this screen. When you have made your selection, click the Next Starting Document hyperlink that appears at the bottom of the task pane to continue. In the next pane of the Mail Merge Wizard, Word will ask, How do you want to set up your document? Note that the choice is very slightly, depending upon what type of document you selected to create in the previous pane. If you have a blank document open that you want to use as the Merge document, then select the Use the Current Document choice. If you select this option, then simply click the Next Select Recipients hyperlink at the bottom of the task pane to continue. If you would like to use one of the pre-made Mail Merge templates that are available in Word, then select the Start from a Template option. In this case, you would then need to next click the Select Template hyperlink that appears in the middle of the task pane in order to open the Select Template dialog box. In this dialog box, you can then double click on the Mail Merge template that you want to use. Note that the template can be modified, if necessary, to better suit your needs. Now after selecting your template, you would click the Next Select Recipients hyperlink at the bottom of the task pane when you're ready to continue. You can also open any previously saved Word document to use it as the merge document. Now if you wish to do that, you would choose the Start from Existing Document option. In the Start from Existing section that appears, you can then click the More Files option and then click the Open button to launch the Open dialog box. You can then use this dialog box to browse for the Word document that you want to use. Once you've found it, just double click the document in the Open dialog box to have it display in the main document window. At that point, you can then just click the Next Select Recipients hyperlink at the bottom of the task pane to continue. Also note that if you selected the Envelopes or Labels option back in the first screen of the Mail Merge Wizard, then in the second screen you'll have completely different options than the ones that we just mentioned. If you selected Envelopes, then you will see two options in the task pane. If the currently open document isn't a standard envelope, then you can select the Change Document Layout option and then click the Next Select Recipients hyperlink at the bottom of the task pane to continue to the Envelope Options dialog box. You could also just click the Envelope Options command within the task pane to open the Envelope Options dialog box if you prefer. Now the Envelope Options dialog box contains options for printing your envelopes. Most importantly, here is where you select the envelope size that you'll be using. You can also set the display of the font for both the return address and delivery address on the Envelope Options tab. Then you can click the Printing Options tab to set other options, such as the Printer Feed options and Printer Tray options. When you finish setting your desired options, click OK to return to the Mail Merge Wizard. If necessary, you can then click the Next Select Recipients hyperlink at the bottom of the task pane to continue to the third screen in the Mail Merge Wizard. 
Now, if you selected the Labels option in the first screen of the Mail Merge Wizard, then the second screen will have options similar to the ones that you have for envelopes. So if the currently open document isn't a standard label, then you can click the Change Document Layout option, and then click the Next Select Recipients hyperlink at the bottom of the task pane to continue and open the Label Options dialog box. You could also directly just click the Label Options hyperlink in the task pane to open the Label Options dialog box if you prefer. Now this dialog box contains the options for printing your labels. So first select whether you will be using a continuous feed printer or page printers by choosing the appropriate option in the printer information section. If you select the page printers option, you may need to select from which tray in the printer you will print your labels by choosing the desired tray from the tray drop-down. In the label information section, select the manufacturer of your labels from the label vendors drop-down. Then select the label type you will be using from the product number list. Once you've selected your label type, click the OK button to return to the task pane. If necessary, click the Next Select Recipients hyperlink at the bottom of the task pane to continue to the third screen in the Mail Merge Wizard. Now once you have selected the document to use as your Mail Merge document, you must next choose the data source for the Mail Merge document in the Select Recipients pane within the Mail Merge Wizard. If you already have a list, such as a Word table or Excel spreadsheet, that you wish to use for the Merge document, then choose the Use an Existing List option at the top of the task pane. If you choose this option, then you will need to click the Browse hyperlink in the middle of the task pane in order to launch the Select Data Source dialog box. This dialog box will open up and display the contents of a default folder, so you may need to navigate to the folder in which your actual data source is stored. Once you have found the list that you want to use as your data source, you can double click on it in order to select it and return to the task pane. Note that you may need to select a specific table from the database or select a specific sheet from a workbook if you are using either an Access Database or Excel Workbook as the data source. Once you have selected the data source you will be using, you will see the Mail Merge Recipients dialog box appear. You can use this dialog box to filter and sort the recipient information. We will examine how to use this dialog box in a separate lesson. However, once that has been done, you can click the OK button in the Mail Merge Recipients dialog box to close it and return to the task pane. If you wanted to use information from an Outlook's contact folder versus using an existing list, then you would select the option button for Select from Contacts in the Select Recipient screen in the task pane. That will then launch Microsoft Outlook. In Outlook, you will need to select the Contacts folder that you want to use as the data source. Once you've selected the Contacts folder that you'll be using, you will again see the Mail Merge Recipients dialog box appear where you can filter and sort the data from the data source. Once again, we'll cover the use of that dialog box in a separate lesson, as it's fairly extensive. Once you've finished using the dialog box, just click the OK button to return to the task pane. You could also create a new list of mail merge information to use by selecting the Type a New List option in the task pane, and then clicking the Create button that appears. Word then prompts you to create a new list for the mail merge in the New Address List dialog box. We will cover how to create and edit a data source on the fly in a separate lesson. However, once you've created the list, you can click OK to open the mail merge recipient's dialog box. As mentioned, we use this to filter and sort the data used by the Mail Merge document, and this will also be covered in a separate lesson. So once you finish sorting and filtering the data using this dialog box, click the OK button to return to the task pane. After you've set the data source for your Merge document, click the Next hyperlink at the bottom of the task pane to proceed to the next step. In the next step of the Mail Merge Wizard, you create the static or unchanging information that will appear within the Mail Merge document. You also use the available hyperlinks in the task pane 
to insert various fields of information from your data source into your document at the desired position. To insert information from your data source, you can click the More Items hyperlink in the task pane. This will launch the Insert Merge Field dialog box. You can select the option for Database Fields at the top of the dialog box to see a listing of available fields from your data source. You can then click on the name of the field that you want to insert into the selected position within your document, and then click the Insert button at the bottom of the dialog box to insert the selected field. Note that if you needed to simply insert some address information, you can simply click the Address Block hyperlink within this task pane to open the Insert Address Block dialog box. Here you can select what elements of the address to insert, and then click the OK button to insert the selected address elements. You could also click the Greeting Line hyperlink in the task pane to open the Insert Greeting Line dialog box. Here you can choose from several letter openings for your mail merge document. Then click OK to return to the task pane. Also note that if you are creating labels, you only need to create the fields in the first label. You can then click the Update All Labels button to copy the fields that you inserted into the first label to all of the other label areas in the Mail Merge document. Now when you are done creating your merge document, click the Next button at the bottom of the Mail Merge to continue. The next screen in the task pane allows you to preview the merge results. To do this, just click the double pointing chevrons at the top of the task pane to view the merge results prior to actually merging the data. After you've previewed the information to ensure that the merge has been performed correctly, click the Next button at the bottom of the task pane to continue. Now when you want to print the mail merge document, you can just click the Print button at the top of the task pane to open the Merge to Printer dialog box. Here you can select the range of records in the data source that you want to print, and then just click the OK button when you're ready to print the selected records. If you wish to make individual changes to different letters or labels, etc., within the merge group, then you can click the Edit Individual Letters hyperlink in the middle of the task pane. This will launch the Merge to New Document dialog box, where you can select the range of records to merge to a new document. This would be the output document that is often created during the merge process. In the New Document window that appears, you can then make changes to the individual letters if you wish. You can then print the new output document, along with any of the individual editing changes that you have made, in order to complete your merge. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.